Hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our webinar session entitled Self-Determination Theory and Healthy Aging, organized by the Office of Education Research Professional Development Committee at the National Institute of Education in Singapore. My name is Munira and I am a research scientist with the Office of Education Research, short OER, at NIE. I am the moderator for this session. Now, please allow me to introduce our main presenter for our session today, Dr. Betsy Ng. Betsy received her PhD from the Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. She is a research scientist and lecturer at the Office of Education Research at NIE. She has been actively involved in education research since year 2009. Her areas of expertise include motivation and lifelong learning. She has broad experience as an education specialist, polytechnic lecturer, science editor and educator in a range of educational settings. She is also a member of the editorial board for international journals, such as the Cambridge Journal of Education. Without further ado, please extend a warm welcome to our presenter, Dr. Betsy Ng. Betsy, please. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes, uh, Betsy, I can see it, um, but you might want to just maximize it. Um. All right, thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. It's more like a sharing session and also um, thanks to Alex who has joined me in this particular afternoon webinar. I hope you all have a good lunch. And to start off, let me just... Uh, do a short poll with all of you. Um, Vivian, are you there? Yes, I am sorry. So the Okay, poll. so just a quick one because I would like to get a sense of the audience um, in terms of what you would like to actually learn from this seminar. So I will just give you a... Okay, it's just a 10 second. Uh, maybe more than that. How, 30 seconds for you to respond. So we have 15 seconds now. I will end it probably a, at 35 seconds. So now it's 26, 27 seconds. Another five more seconds to go. I'm not sure whether there will be more participants coming in. Uh, okay, any more response? Can see like one or two going up. Okay, I think the response is quite clear. I would end the poll. Uh, we launched the poll. Uh, this is actually, do you want to continue? I think I just cancel. Okay, I'm, are you able to, to see the poll result for the audience? You can actually tell that 51% would like to understand more about self-determination theory perspective on healthy aging, which is SDT in short and you would like to understand the challenges of healthy aging. The ranking is, uh, okay, first is understand what is SDT and healthy aging. Second is learn strategies. And then the third one is to understand the challenges of healthy aging. And there's a small minority who would like to know about the publishing of the book. So I will stop sharing the results because I think the whole idea is actually to, to have a sense of where the audience are coming from. Okay, so I'll close this. Thanks for your participation in the poll. I will move on to my next slide. This is actually the outline for the day. I will give you a brief background in terms of 
why what is it what is SDT and healthy aging and what exactly is the book about which is a snapshot and share with you some of the perspectives on aging as well as autonomy finally we will end it with some of the associated associated life challenges that were brought out in the book by our international contributors. We also have uh, a couple of local contributors from the book in terms of the empirical findings. And of course, the sustainability part is something that is important because at the end of the day, how are we going to sustain healthy aging? And I think to the audience, it's coming from either your own personal perspective or in terms of as an educator practitioner point of view. So just to give you a very brief, a very brief history of, um, I put it history as an inverted because it's not exactly a long history. It's like, how did the book come about? It started off in the 2000, about five years back, 2016. That was when I attended a conference. Uh, it's known as the British Psychology Society Conference, 2016 PBS in short. And I did a presentation on this topic, which is exactly the same, self-determination theory and healthy aging. Um, I think I just tweak it a bit by putting it as, instead of um, this short title, I just mentioned about healthy aging in the SDT perspective. And it was a new topic per se at that point of time where a, and a publisher actually caught hold of me and said, hey, hey, would you like to actually publish a book on this topic? Because it's quite a niche area. As you can tell, like five years back, and now it's already 2021 and aging, trend is actually upcoming, especially if you look at the Singapore trend where the government recent um, budget, um, I mean, even not just in the local context, but in the global context, this aging topic has becoming a very important thing that how to actually promote and how to en um, enhance or sustain the current lifespan, because knowing that our lifespan is on the increasing side as well as the global population of the aging has been increasing um, I think by 2030, we can actually see quite a number of age, uh, aged people and plus the cases of uh, old age conditions like dementia, Alzheimer has been on the increasing. So actually for now, I think the statistic is one is to 10 uh, among the elderly population. But in 2030, this ratio would probably have gone up um, double or even triple. So it can be quite scary. And that's why because of the history, the person actually approached me and, okay, let's do a book on this. Uh, however, the, the doing of the book is a bit not so simple as Alex will actually come in to share about the process of getting a book published. Because as you can see, the conceptualization, when I just started off with a talk in 2016, until this book is out last year, October 2020, um, if you were to say from the initial phase till then, it definitely took almost uh, four years. The whole idea of getting this book out, uh, if I don't look at the initial conceptualization phase, is about two years or slightly more. Uh, I'm very thankful because I have a group of contributors who respond very fast and also very thankful to Springle editors, uh, especially Alex, who uh, they, they are very strong in terms of support. So initially, the, the ed the editor approached me was actually their sister's company, Palgrave. But things didn't go along the way. And actually, thankfully and luckily, I got to know Alex. And therefore, the book is being published under Springer, which is actually the parental company. So she will share more about that later. I will not hold too much of, um, I mean, her time in terms of that. Let her give the sharing to the rest of you. And that's the timeline, okay? Just to give you a brief background of this book that it took almost uh, years, I mean, a few years to actually reach this stage. But it's actually a, a very meaningful process, although it takes time. Okay, so just to give you, because this is more like a sharing session, I do not want to go in too much into the conceptual framework or theoretical framework, but just to give you an overview for those audience who do not know what is SDT. I mean, in general, SDT is, talk, is a macro-human uh, macro theory that actually talks about three basic psychological needs, which encompass competence, autonomy, and relatedness. So this is just an overview of SDT. And with these three needs being fulfilled, that's where we would actually have this intrinsic motivation. And in other words, it's like um, only when you have the satisfaction of these three needs, it's a holistic uh, in inert motivation 
a drive within you that actually you will, you will actually go into uh, doing things that you want. Like for instance, having this STT approach, it actually does help to have the mindset, to have the goal to actually go, um, go into healthy aging, which is, first of all, what is aging? So we know that we all age. I mean, the, the problem is aging starts, we, we, we always think that, oh, when we get old, that's where we want to do something to stay healthy. However, healthy aging doesn't mean that it is a, to, this concept is being termed in my um, context is that healthy aging should actually start in the beginning once you know, once you know um, what is aging. And in fact, even young adults should also en en what they call it, embrace, embrace the, the notion of healthy aging. So aging, although it's across a lifespan, since we were born until um, the end of the lifespan, but healthy aging is actually not just doing exercise, if you look at this simple um, picture that describes it's like healthy aging is about socializing. You have a healthy social lifestyle, interact with your friends, not just with your family members. It's also about having a good physical, a good physical ability, such as doing things like, um, like in this case, it's a stretching exercise or yoga, daily exercise, and also about diet because we know that the, um, in Okin Okinawa, right, as you know, most of the cent most of the centurions, I think uh, the oldest probably one, one, three years old because they have a high healthy diet. They actually started very, very early having their own organic little farm in front of their house, you know, cultivate their own vegetables, their own grains, even like uh, simple corns or etc. And this is something that healthy aging encompasses not just this, but many more, which I will share with you. Uh, and this is a snapshot of the book. There are four sections in the book. And some of these, I just give you examples of, so that you are aware that, oh, uh, the section on understanding healthy aging, for instance, this, this one talk about relationship among needs, satisfaction, creativity, growth, mindset, and life outcomes, which in this case is talking about life satisfaction. This is a local study done um, in Singapore. And then the second one, the music engagement, is talking about the elderly form a band, all right? And they actually have this social support, which I highlighted in the previous slide in terms of social is important to actually, it's part of healthy aging. And this contributor is from Hong Kong University. So it's quite interesting that the book gives an overall perspective of different ways and how to support um, healthy aging in that sense. And of course, the challenges in healthcare services. This was a, a lady done in US. Very interesting study because in US, they have a lot of, uh, I mean, for us, we call it nursing home. They call it MCU, memory care unit, where these are the patients, the elderly patients with dementia, they were actually put there. And it's interesting study because it's a phenomenological where she actually went deep to understand about six of these patients. At the end of it, right, because we know that basic psychological needs, the three needs are important, but we know um, patients with dementia, competence may be something that they are lacking because to the, towards the end of the last stage, they don't have that capability or the ability. And relatedness is something that they lost the sense or they lost the ability to actually socialize. However, autonomy is the the very important psychological need among these uh, residents with dementia. So it's a very interesting um, qualitative study that she did. And of course, the last section, which is promoting healthy aging, where we bring in the context of how to, what are the ways to actually promote or to encourage healthy aging? But of course, there are certain support that is needed. For instance, the opportunities and the environment, which I will share in the next, um, in the later slide. So to, before I go on to the further part of what are the opportunities, what are the environment, environmental factors that can promote healthy aging, I would like to hear from the audience again, which one of the following do you think is the most important aspect of healthy aging? So again, probably uh, I will give you um, 50 seconds to try to respond. Vivian, sorry, uh, would like to start the poll.
I think while you're responding, let me just uh, a check if anyone at this moment, oh, no question being raised. Okay, so far so good, I, I guess. Another 30 seconds to go. Five seconds to go. Okay, so I would share the results. Oh, there's an error in sharing the poll result. I don't know what is the reason for that. Uh, okay, are you able to see the results now? Okay, I just uh, read out the results to you because there are five five responses, right? Uh, five options, sorry. First one is stay employed. Second is connect socially. Third is exercise regularly. Fourth is have a good diet and sleep. The last one is actually learn new skills such as a musical, learning how to play a musical instrument. So in terms of these five, right, there are responses among the five. And of course, the first is most important is connect sociability. We have 49% indicated connect socially is very important. Followed by the second one, which is have a good diet and sleep. Third one is to stay employed. Uh, not a very big percentage, it's about 12%. So the gap between the second and third is quite big. 27% is have good diet and sleep and 12% is stay employed. And then of course, the last two quite close to each other, learn a new skill, exercise regularly, which is 7 and 5% respectively. So it's quite interesting to, to see the responses because I, frankly speaking, I'm just being curious. Uh, I do not know the different... Different, you all come from different parts um, probably of the world. And it's quite interesting that because of certain of your value driven, you may have a different way of looking at healthy aging. So there's quite, quite, quite a good sense that most of you do agree that social connect socially is important. And yes, it's true because in the book, in fact, all these five areas are covered in the book. Um, However, the last aspect, which I mentioned about the opportunities and environment, the social element is actually very important. So that is something that from now onwards, right, you, you actually have to try to have more friends, not just more, not just more friends is good, but it's the quality, the quality of friendship that you have because it, it is really important. Okay, I would just give you an overview of what are the different perspectives of aging from the book. We have successful aging, um, these are the different areas, active aging, and of course, healthy aging. So what are the differences among these three? I just give you a very brief description. Successful aging is actually the process of developing and maintaining personal well-being that is consistent with normal aging. So in the, the very first term that came out was successful aging. Then after that, WHO, that's the World Health Organization, they actually changed it to active aging because they feel that successful aging seems to be just, there is this uh, underlying uh, notion that is probably thinking that only elderly with the ability to age in that sense is successful, but actually it's not the case. And they changed it to active aging where it is the process of optimizing opportunities for health, participation to enhance quality of life as we age. And of course, the latest term is healthy aging, which is process of developing and maintaining functional ability that enables well-being in older age. This means that it is more holistic approach in terms of healthy aging because we actually should start the moment we, 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 we are aware of, we don't have to wait until we have surpassed 50s, then we start to have this healthy aging mindset. In fact, we should start very young age because it's actually about well-being such that you're able and able well-being in older age means that start young because preventive measure is always better than um, you realize it I mean it's always good to start earlier right prevention is better than cure in that sense so 
the outline of autonomy, where the book actually talks about there are different areas of autonomy, such as physical activity, uh, walking, hiking, mental activity, like learning a new skill, uh, for instance, cognitive exercises, and then of course the social relationships, which is one example that I shared in the one, the snapshot, which is a musical band created by a group of elderly people and they actually enjoy playing different kind of instruments. Associated life challenges and support, these are some examples where you know, even though we try to be as healthy as possible, there are still some of the, these are some of the areas that you have to bear in mind because of the physical ability, because of the mental health, financial stability, whether at old age you do have that financial security to support you and areas of support, that's where environmental comes in. Um, we have certain health health accessories such as old people tend to get weaker in terms of hearing, right? Then there's hearing aid to support, etc. And this is what I mentioned earlier in the previous slide about the promoting, the pro how to promote healthy aging. The opportunities and the environment do play a very important role. So I just give you some examples here. All right, we have uh, like financial support, like uh, how actually important it is to have that sense of security because without the financial support, it's also a bit difficult to do certain things such as learning a new skill unless uh, we can learn very techno savvy elderly or they are good in terms of YouTube. Uh, they can actually learn something from YouTube and also the environment is very important, which I would like to just end it with uh, environment such as age-friendly infrastructure and what exactly these are, which can be seen on this slide. This is just an example of our local, our local context where we, how we have improved over the years with the age-friendly infrastructure. Like for instance, lift upgrading in the housing development board flats, which every level now there's a lift for the sake of um, uh, adults with some immobility. We also have uh, cases where if you notice some of the green men lighting, the, the traffic lights, you tap the elderly cut or the senior cut, actually the green, the green man comes out or it's, it's faster for them and also extended time for them to cross the road. So this is some example of age-friendly infrastructure. And of course, I would like to end my, my talk with this very, to me, I find this, this quote is uh, meaningful. There is a fountain of youth. It is in your mind, your talents, the creativity you bring to your life and the lives of the people you love when you learn to tap this source. You will, you will truly have defeated age. So this is something that uh, Sophia Lauren came out his, I mean, her perspective of healthy aging. And I thought that uh, healthy aging is something not just based on physical, mental, as well as what we discussed just now, like some of the key points, right? A lot of it still comes from your mind. Everything is in your mind and your mind is actually a very powerful weapon. That's how you get started things, um, to put in, things into action. So this is, this is the intention of the book. And the book is more like a, a sharing in terms of the different areas, the different strategies where you can look into it in terms of healthy aging from the perspective of SDT because SDT is the basic psychological needs. Although basic psychological needs are important, but at the end, Everything comes hand in hand, your mind, your heart, your soul. I mean, this is what actually brings you or makes, this is actually what makes you as a person and why you are doing this. It's like a purpose-driven thing. So that's it. Okay, anything else? Uh, I will stop sharing because I, I think we can, we don't have much questions and we can put it towards the end for that. Okay, thanks.